What's up guys? Hope you're doing great just coffee shots and today you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Did I make any f***ing sense? <laughs> we gonna be rich, nigga! Yeah, I feel great, 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 great. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Poop, 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 poop. 1312 Make the Clock Work is a documentary, is a project that is uh, meant to inspire people um, especially people who have certain challenges that they think they are that that they think cripple them, um, you know, or prevent them from doing certain things or achieving their goals as 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 um, as people. It's about you know trying to reach for more. You get me not being comfortable in you know whatever situation it is you are, but then try to like you know push for more, trying to want more. It is a presentation on the life of a very special individual um, who made it against very long odds. It is literally the documentation of a person who went through things that could have, should have broken him, but instead made him. Just generally growing up and realizing things in life, I realized that we need to acknowledge who we are as persons, right? And acknowledge how we've been able to overcome all of our struggles and everything. And I feel like that's what 1312 Make the Clock Work sort of documents. Someone um, recognizing his challenge and overcoming it and becoming like a better person. 1312 Make the Clock Work. <laughs> it's been a journey. Um, this means a lot to me. This is like um, what I have always hoped for. Maybe a bit of what I've hoped for. I, I feel there is a clock in everybody's life. When I say a clock, I mean something that could be a blessing. But because you are stuck on seeing the negative part of it, you can't see the blessing. Everybody, every single soul on earth has that. I was a bit picky about who to work with because I wanted my story to be told, I shouldn't say right, but yeah, right. And um, thankfully, everybody that has been on board to get this done has been amazing. My name is Dillis Maxvoy. I directed and produced the documentary 1312 Make the Clock Work. My name is Say. I'm a rapper and producer. I scored certain parts of the documentary. I shot some of the behind the, behind the scenes videos. And yeah, I have some of my songs in there. This is Kobe Shots and I was the director of photography or DOP and editor of the production. <laughs> it was just everything. It's very hard to define what role I played in this thing because I was basically involved on every front with regards to coming up with the ideas for shoots, with regards to carrying out the shoots themselves. It was just like follow. It's just a <laughs> Degrees, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, the only part I probably didn't take much part in is the editing, right? Which is because I don't have the technical skill for it. But beyond that, sort of like, I have no idea how to describe myself for this thing. I'm working on this documentary in general was very challenging because I had to perform several roles that under normal circumstances in a the production, there are departments that are dedicated to do this and that and that. So I was doing the filming, I was doing the lighting or the gaffer, I was, I was also making sure that um, everything that was needed on set in terms with, um, or talking about um, gear and equipment were all on set or were all available before we started to film. And also, I was taking care of sound on set. I'm not, um, I'm not a sound man or as someone who is oriented 
when it comes to sound, but I did my best. As long as you know, you know what can be used for this to get a decent sound, it was just fine for me. This is my first time directing and producing a documentary, and for me, I had no idea how to go about things. And you know, it's like it's like that for me. If you were if you're very close to me, you get to know that I just take on challenges like I know nothing about, and I try to like learn on the job, right? So um, I sort of had to, and this is huge. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this felt really, really huge and overwhelming. But there was this like just this internal drive. I couldn't like control it, so I just had to act on it, right? So I'll say the difficult part for me working on this project is just that scary feeling that I'm entering into a world of the unknown. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go about certain things, but there's this internal drive I can't put a stop to, and it's just what's pushing me to create something. Whenever you are involved in something that is greater than you, right? Whenever the driving force of any endeavor is greater than your need for safety or, you know, comfort or convenience, um, there is just the force that sort of propels you towards it. At the time, we had the idea, the world was still relatively sane, relatively sane. And then just about when we got started, the coronavirus came and the whole world got turned upside down. And I, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail in what we were facing personally, but there was a lot going on at home too with us, you know, in that time. And to be honest, I can't explain where we found the strength to keep going. During um, lockdown, when I was thinking of ways to make judicious use of my time, and I decided to just call up a few people for interviews and stuff. It wasn't working out. I thought of like reaching out to Clark to see if I could get an interview with him. And, you know, just in the discussion, we realized that we could actually make a documentary instead of just like an interview for my regular interviews on my YouTube channel. I thought to myself that this is just the perfect thing I needed. So. I had people come to me, ask me um, about, I mean, they're, they're interested in listening to how I'm doing what I'm doing, especially when they see me play basketball or do other sports. So they are marveled and they want to ask me, yo, how are you doing this? So I happen to tell them just a bit of my story, you know, when people see me play soccer, they'd be like, I think I see you basketball, they play. They'd be like, oh, they had to play soccer with me, they'd be soccer I start with, but I tell them something small. I had people come to me and ask that they document my story. They want to use my story for something, you know. I don't want to mention names, but I've had like three different people ask me to tell my story so they can, you know, document it or use it for something. And it didn't feel right. I mean, no offense, but I needed somebody to be emotionally invested in me. I wanted to feel the investment that the person had emotionally in me to, to tell my story the right way, the way I felt was supposed to go out. I mean, there are some technicalities that, you know, we need to put in there, you know, some editing and all that. But I needed to feel that this is the way I want to tell it. All those that came to me, I felt and I knew that they wanted to use it their way. And I can't retell the story. I can't make people see the story and then I'll later I'll make my way and be like, oh no, the one you do, then be fake. Then say for it. No, I wasn't ready to do that. That's like a long story. So I needed to get the first one right. I needed to get whoever wants to, you know, tell my story to tell it my way, the way I want it to be told. And I, I feel my, my producer was like, perfect. And I felt the emotional investment she had in me. And anytime she's listening to me tell any part of my story, I could see her eyes listen to me. And she does not forget it. Telling my story has really helped me. I know what I've been through you know, but it was just in my head. So having to relive the moments, having to 
tell it to someone, especially the camera, but with someone standing behind it. And memorize or have to say them over and over again so I get it right and to rethink about them and relive them so I can have the emotions right to tell them the right way. I think that helped me to know exactly how my story is. And there are things that I didn't even know about myself. There are things that I said out loud while being interviewed that I didn't think about it the way I was supposed to think about it. There are people that I met while having this documentary done that listened to my story and gave me a different perception or different perspective on how I should look at it. Telling my story has given me another perspective on how I should move in life. I think it has re-motivated me. I'm really honored to have my songs in a documentary. I'm actually blessed, I feel blessed. I'm really happy about it. And the crazy thing is I was telling um, the director about how, you know, the intro song, like my song plays as the intro for the, you know, documentary and it fits so well. Man, man, just look at him. <laughs> What's up? I mean, why can't he be like everybody else? Why he gotta be different? <laughs> I don't know, man. Just look at him, look at him, just look at him, man. It made me think I literally wrote it like for the documentary, you get me? And it made me, you know, sit down and think about how impactful like my own songs were, you get me? Like Filming as being, uh, you know, part of a crew and not actually being upfront as the director taught me a lot of things of how to, you know, work within a team and to be led. Uh, my director isn't a male, as I would always would want to, you know, <laughs> opt for. And uh, working with her taught me a lot of things that if you accommodate, you know, people a little bit more, you you would be exposed to something that under normal circumstances you would you wouldn't encounter. Introducing, say, um, a producer and um, an artist who also, um, you know, got challenged to put his. His skill set also on the line and uh, you know try to you know achieve something that he hasn't started ever before told me that or brought my attention to the fact that I am actually within a set of people who are you know driven towards a particular goal just like myself. This is actually my first time scoring a, a documentary or a movie let's say and it was it was a great process. I actually had to, you know, learn a lot of things, things I didn't know before. I was telling, you know, the, I was telling Dennis at a time about how I went to look up on the internet, you know, trying to research about scoring and they keep, they kept throwing these big words at me, like, you know, I'm like, bro, shit, that's too much, like, you get me? But then I just had to, I'm, I'm the type of person I don't like to follow rules, you get me? Like, I like to do things on my own. I just try to make it fit, that's it. So for me, I just watched the video and, you know, created the sounds that, you know, were like suitable for those scenes. And um, it may not look like it, but th the team behind this project is full of people who have had to overcome a lot of obstacles, who have had to jump a lot of hurdles to pursue their dreams and goals and that is the message of this project that no matter the challenges we face no matter the obstacles in our way with the right focus with the right people behind us with the right energy with the positive mind you know, intent on doing good, they can all be overcome. And I'm hoping that just as much as that did this, that this project did that for us, it will do that for other people. It will inspire people to keep going, keep going. No matter what anybody says, you know, only you know what's in your heart. Only you know what you want to do with your life. And 
when people look at you, they might rubbish you, they might, you know, belittle you, they might tell you you're being an idiot or that you are incapable of achieving these things. And they may be right, but the only way to find out is to try. Make your clock work. I feel like we as human beings all have disabilities. That's how I feel like. It doesn't necessarily have to be something physical. It, it could be mental, it could be, you know, inside you. There's something that's like always in the way, trying to get in the way, you know, of you trying to achieve something. And I feel like that right there is like a disability. And once you're able to, you know, um, tackle that or identify it, you could like, you know, take it out the way. Don't use that as an excuse, basically. That's what I'm saying. Don't use that as an excuse to, you know, remain at one place. Just aim for, you know, the best. I feel it's a motivational documentary that can reach everybody in, in so many ways. You don't have to be physically challenged to tap from this documentary. You have a challenge. You have something you're making an excuse of. And you have to get out of that and step up and ask for more and do more. Every person in this world has to see this. And I feel that it's going to be a big impact in everybody's life. If you listen or take time to actually watch and digest the story, you'd realize that um, he's really here to motivate people. And that's why you should watch this until I make the clock work. <laughs>